We start in a few minutes. Thank you very much.
We are about to start the webinar, the first one in the series of webinars, getting prepared for your doctorate. A few minutes and we will start. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome each and everyone. So, Dr. Aish, you could start. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Dr. Aish, can you hear me? Good afternoon, Doctor. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. How are you doing? Fine, thank you very much. Good thank you for hosting this webinar. Good afternoon, Najed. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for your time. Everyone. Hi, good afternoon. Thank you, thank you for, for the invitation and thank you for all the efforts that you have made to make this day come true. My pleasure. Good afternoon, good afternoon all the speakers and the attendees. Can you hear me? Yes, we can, Najed, we can. The participant, the attendees, can you hear us? Can you hear us clear and loud and clear? Yeah. Yeah, yes, your is voice clear. is crystal clear. Yeah. Nice, thank okay. you. Great. Shall we so, start? Yeah, so Najat, the uh, over to you. Najat, over to you. Baraka. Uh, before, before, please make sure you are muted. Please make sure you're mu muted. Your mics are off. Please. Did Otherwise, you, you hear me? I cannot you. hear you. Uh, it's in, it, it's muted. <laughs> Najat, yes. No, no, I'm not talking about you. Najat, you can start. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that well. This is why I'm asking before I start. Thank you so much. Course, thank, thank you so much, everyone, for being with us this afternoon. We are so happy to host this webinar uh, called Getting Prepared for Your Doctorate Tips and Strategies for Success. This webinar is organized by the Arabic Democratic Center in Germany, the University of Benghazi in Libya, the Idri Services, Massa School, and the EFL Algeria. We are so glad to uh, have this uh, number of participants to share with us their knowledge, the tools, the questions, and also be pleased to have the speakers. I can see the names. Nadia Idri, Mohamed Malouk, Halima Benzouk, and Tariq Asasi, Amal Ben Yahya. This webinar is coordinated with by Najat Khaniwi and Fuzia Rawaf. So before we start this session, we invite all participants to close, to shut down their microphones. If they want to open their cameras, maybe for uh, a snapshot of the screen for their memories. And we will let everyone to ask at the end of this session to uh, ask directly by activating uh, the microphone or by writing in the chat box below. So please 
Be focused, listen well, take notes, and prepare your questions at the end of the session. Uh, the mic and the floor is yours, Dr. Fuzia. You are welcome. Thank you so much, Dr. Aish. Thank you for hosting this webinar. And thank you for your efforts you devoted with me. And so sorry for tiring you so much. But I'd like uh, to ask for a favor, Dr. Aish, if possible. Uh, sorry? Can you hear me? Can I ask for a favor? Yes, come on. Could you allow more than uh, 100 people? Because many people are contacting me, they cannot join. Uh, sorry, but, but uh, joining the webinar is free and it depends on the settings of each one a computer. So the platform is allowing anyone who got the link to the room, so it just click on it and it he will or yes, she will be in the room. Zoom can, can uh, welcome more than 100 people? I don't think so. It's the limit. Wow. Sorry for yes. in, the, the interruption, but, but maybe they didn't register. So they don't oh, have sorry, the but you, but the, to... but mm. they can follow the webinar on our page on the Arabic Democratic Center because it's bro it broadcasts live. live. Yes. Yes, okay. I will give the uh, the link so you can transmit it to yes. the others. It's okay. I will inform them. That thank you. Thank you so much. So Unajas, the floor is yours. Over to you. Okay. Welcome everyone, and thank you for joining us today. Uh, my name is Dr. Najat Khaniwi, and I'm thrilled to be uh, your host today with Dr. Ruwag for this informative webinar on uh, ASIN, the journey to the doctoral uh, <coughs> uh, entrance exam. Special thanks first go to the Arabic Democratic Center for sponsoring this event and making it come true. Uh, also, all thanks go to Dr. Well for all the efforts she has made into making this event a, uh, uh, happen. And for Dr. Karim Aish for the management and technical assistance. So, <clears throat> securing actually a spot in uh, such a prestigious program, which is the doctoral program, is no easy feat. The competition is fierce. And the exam can be a daunting experience. With, but with the right strategies and tips preparation, you can assure your position for success. And this is why we have assembled to you a panel of esteemed scholars and experts to guide you throughout this process, the success process, helpfully. First, joined, we are joined by Professor Mohamed Malouk from Sidi Bel Abbas University, who will be providing the opening talk about the most commonly encountered challenges by the PhD contesters um, and the students passing the uh, contest. We have also the esteemed and well-known Professor Nadia Idri from Bijay University, who is renewed for her expertise in the field of EFL, and she will be sharing invaluable insights into the doctoral school system and how does it differ from the uh, old, um, uh, let us say, traditional forms of the uh, program. The esteemed professor Halima Benzour is also joining us from Wargla University to answer all concerns and help you survive this phase of your of the doctoral journey. The distinguished Dr. Amal Ben Yahya is joining us from Loanas Constantine also to share her expertise and experience in organizing and running a PhD program in didactics and ESP. Last but not least, we have also Dr. Tarq Assasi from Biskra University, a seasoned professor and esteemed colleague in the field of ESP. He will be sharing uh, first-hand insights on the context within the field. So throughout this meeting, 
will be covering a wide range of topics that were collected actually from uh, 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 or inspired from the um, your questions that were collected by Dr. Ruwa. These center around main, um, four main uh, topics, which are understanding the doctoral school system and the specific conditions and specialists for this year's context. Second, some proven strategies, preparation strategies for optimal performance within the context. Some strategies for writing and compelling a well-structured essay. And some techniques to convince the examiner and showcase your abilities within the context. So we'll also leave some uh, space for you on the discussion panel here on the on the um, uh, yes on the discussion section here on the Zoom application, where you can also insert your questions for discussion. So please don't hesitate to engage with your with our panel, with our esteemed panel of experts, with your uh, questions. So get ready to take notes, learn from the best, and gain the tools you need to secure your position for this year's context. Let's dive in and unlock the secrets to passing the doctoral entrance exam with flying colors. So Professor Mohamed Malouk, the, the floor is yours. Let us um, hear about the most commonly encountered challenges by our contesters. And uh, just excuse me. Yeah. Uh, Professor Maluk, Professor Malou, could they make it? So let's move to the first questions to Professor, Professor Nadine about doctoral, yes. doctoral school and yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So uh, then let us move to Professor Idri. Professor Idri, please help your. Hello. Okay, so you'll be addressing a fundamental question that has been recurring this year, especially from the contesters. This year, we have a, a special or something that is in you to the context, That's which it. is doctoral school. Can you please enlighten us about this and how does it differ from the other contact, other sorry, other years contests, and the, uh, how would it be? what specialties are open, and other information that you would uh, prefer Perfect. to share. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum wa mubarakah for everybody. So uh, I would like first to thank the uh, Arabic Democratic Center and uh, all the organizers, uh, EG Services and EFL Algeria and the University of Benghazi for, uh, for organizing such a very interesting uh, webinar, which might really serve hundreds of students around the country. Of course, the topic is quite important and interesting, mainly at this moment, because uh, you know that in Algeria, we have just got new information about doctor schools. In the past, we used to have what we call the traditional doctoral context. We are calling this this way just to distinguish between mm -hmm. this year's uh, doctoral uh, sorry, this year's uh, doctoral context and the other year's doctoral uh, context. So uh, for this year, the ministry decided to um, divide the uh, doctoral context into schools, covering a number of universities together. So we and in each doctoral school, we have what we call the focal university. The focal university generally is already des designed by the ministry. For example, if we take the, the focal, uh, the focal university is Tizi Uzu. So we have the universities Tizi Uzu, we have the universities Tizi Uzu, Bijaya, and Buira. But if we uh, take algae's, we have more than six or seven. I do not remember the names of all the universities, but the list is already existent for the universities that are joining the doctoral, the focal point, which is the. Uh, is the voice okay? Because I see many comments saying that the, this voice is not... Do you hear me? No, we can hear you. We can hear you. It's clear. You, for me, I can hear. It's vital clear. Very good. Because I see many comments saying that we I can't hear. So the please, those who don't hear, uh, who are not able to hear me, can just check their, um, their phones or their computers. So for the focal points, until now, we still do not know 
uh, how the uh, context is going to take place. But uh, when and how, because in the past, uh, we used to have every university needs to take the dates. We have a period of time where we can take the contest. Uh, but for this year, I think that we need to think about Now we cannot hear you, Professor Idri. The voice is... Uh, I think she mistakenly uh, disactivated the phone. No, I think maybe her child or yeah, interrupted her. I am sorry. I needed to have some quiet. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, well, I go back to the idea of the focal uh, point. So we still do not know how the organization will, uh, will be made, but what is true is that uh, this year, the information I can give you is about the number of positions or the uh, number of uh, places for each university. For example, if we take the University of Bijaya, we have 21, University of Tizi Uzu, 12. It's better than last year. For last year, for University of Bijaya, we got only five, uh, five candidates to get. So what we did, we are supposed to create specialties because I got a question here about how, uh, how what are the specialties. In order to know what specialty exists in each university, you need to check the masters, of that university because there is a condition this year the condition is you need we need to entitle the specialties according to the official masters we have in our university so in pjr for example we have three masters we create we are going to create three specialties but the number of places for each specialty is decided by the committee so we have what we call the cfd the committee de formation doctorale which is already existent by uh, the most ranked teachers in each university, in each department, in each specialty. And then meetings have been made. We could work on the content. We could work on the specialties. We made decisions. And now everything is deposited via progress. So what we are waiting for now is just the official decision from the ministry to give the uh, uh, maybe the final the, the acceptance of each project. These projects are being subject of evaluation by a, com a committee as well at a regional level. Uh, I myself am one of the experts uh, who generally evaluate doctoral offers. So I guess that by next month we will be uh, invited to start uh, evaluating these uh, doctoral offers. But I guess most of the universities that already got the, uh, the the primary acceptance might have these same positions. So for you as students, in order to prepare yourself, I advise you to do the following. See what are the universities that are close to you or the universities that you would, you would like to, uh, to study in or register in. Try to check with the, the uh, students who are there to see what are the masters they have, what are the modules they, uh, uh, they have, what are the specialties and the content. From there, you can start at least being informed about the different content taught in those universities. Because logically speaking, if we are asked to take these uh, masters as the continuity for our doctoral schools, so automatically the background is there in the master's programs. And then before talking about the books, there is no best book. There is a competence, there is skill. This is what we evaluate. So try, try to work out your logical way of seeing things, your critical thinking abilities, your writing abilities, and read about academic writing. And I advise all students to um, develop their research methodology skills because research methodology is found in all spe specialties. You know that in Algeria, we have seven specialties at uh, the master degree. <clears throat> so everybody should, should look at himself or herself and see what is the specialty 
or what other specialties you can have, for example, in mind, the ESP or the uh, the linguistics or the didactics option or uh, literature or civilization, it depends. So if you have one or two specialties in mind, try to check the universities whose masters are done in those universities to start preparing yourself. So you can plan for your candidacy right from now. You do not need to wait. You need only to ask how many places in each university you would like to go to, and you need you can you can do so. For the conditions, of course, you need to uh, have a master degree on equivalent diploma for that in order to register, and everything should be done via progress uh, as usual. Uh, so uh, I also uh, had the questions about how uh, about the uh, proposed methodology. I think that's the uh, I can have the talk by the end because uh, these two questions should be answered by the end of the webinar because um, the question says here proposed methodology used in doctoral studies and uh, the, what are there regular lessons, etc. Because we need first to guide you how to plan for your answer, how to uh, approach the task, how to uh, maybe to answer any kind of question when dealing in each specialty. I, I guess here we have uh, some specialized people in didactics, others in linguistics. I'm not sure whether we have somebody in literature and civilization, but what is true is that you need to have critical thinking skills and abilities to comment, uh, argue, discuss, and explain, because these words are commonly used as you uh, ask it in one of your questions, what is the difference between these? Of course, it is important to know what is needed from you. This is what we mean, how to approach the task in order to know how to plan for your answer. Because the first thing when you look at the question uh, is first looking at the keywords. When you look at the keywords, you can underline the keywords and oh, sorry, retrieve all the sorry, sorry, Professor Idri, because we are getting to these questions later on. Okay, uh, no problem. So, so I will let okay. I will let my colleagues in order not to yeah. answer all the questions. Of course, yeah. yeah. Thank you for yeah. reminding me. You know that the teacher is all the time here to talk nonstop. So, thank you for paying <laughs> my attention to this point <laughs> because okay. we are here to offer whatever we can to our dear students. So, yeah, I stop here so not just to give the the, uh, the ground to other colleagues and thank you for giving me this this chance to share this new information. Okay, thank you. Excellent. Okay, excellent. Thank you for providing us for and for setting the context to us. Uh, now let us move to uh, getting prepared. Uh, the uh, recurring question that the students have been asking over and over again, which is uh, the exam preparation strategies. As an experienced professors and uh, distinguished uh, experts, can you share some um, of the uh, some of your insights on effective study methods that student and time management techniques that students can uh, use to uh, prepare for this uh, exam um, can i address the question to uh, professor benzur yeah. can you please answer yeah, this one that's okay yeah like, assalamu alaikum okay. hello everybody uh, first, I'd like to uh, thank uh, Dr. Najat and Dr. Fozia and all the organizers for organizing this webinar. And I'd like to welcome all uh, the students here, and I'd like to welcome my colleague. We've already heard uh, from my colleague, Professor Nadia Idi from the University of Bijaya. And uh, I think she has given an idea about uh, the doctoral school this year and how students can know about the different majors because I know that students always they start asking about such kind of questions and I think even Professor Idri has already said that more details will be announced of course at the level of universities because even now what we are working on on I mean the, the curriculum let's say of the doctoral uh, let's say training that we have in, at, uh, in uh, each university and I think Professor Edri has said something about the, the, the majors of course uh, the majors we have in uh, each doctoral context go with the major or the master's majors we have 
at, you know, for instance, here at the University of Wergla, we have master's degree in uh, literature and we have also linguistics. So uh, we will have the two linguistics and literature. So coming back to the question given by you, uh, Dr. Nadat, concerning how to uh, get ready for the exam, because I think that uh, students always, they look, they think that when they read the law of references, so they think that they are ready. No, you have like to limit your reading list. I mean, you have to be selective as a student. I think that we have many references nowadays and we have many online references even, and we have many even online lectures shared here on Facebook or anywhere. So the idea here is that uh, students, they have to be selective. I mean, I have to select what I, as a student, I have to select what I can understand. Because some students, they think that they have to learn by heart. It's okay, you can learn by heart some, like some scientific facts or some, uh, you can learn by heart some technical terms you have got. But don't forget that you have to understand the content you are reading. Okay, that's number one, that you have to understand it because sometimes students really, they uh, they may have read a lot about, I don't know whether linguistics or didactics or literature or civilization, they have read a lot about the field, but when it comes to the question, I mean, they feel that they are lost because uh, most of the time, um, the, the day of the exam, it's the first time to, to, to guess or to test the knowledge or to test their understanding. What I should say, when you start revising, when you select, you make your own selection, okay? You have chosen, for instance, three references or two references to be read. After that, when reading and when revising, try to guess a number of questions. And then when uh, guessing, try to answer. Sometimes it's good even to write a good answer because Sometimes even when it comes to the exams question, some students uh, get, will, I mean, will get shocked why, because maybe uh, it will be that first time to answer. So it will be that first time to test their knowledge and understanding. So try to test your knowledge and understanding before the exam, I mean, before the exam, before the doctoral exam. I mean, try to answer that. I mean, I have an essay, okay, how can I write? which kind of questions I should have, or which kind of questions that may go with this content that I'm reading. One, two, three, four. I may have four choices. Then I will start thinking about which kind of answers or which kind of essays I should write in each choice or in each case. Then after that, I start thinking about, okay, here I have to classify one and two and three. Here, because sometimes really some students, they fail in the exam, not because of anything, that because of they misunderstand the question, really. Because the idea is that students, they should know that um, we have some keywords that may, that may go with the content they have read. That's why I'm advising students not to look for many references and not to say that, no, I don't have, I should look for more, or no, I should look for more references because I have to read a lot. So, because so, if I read a lot, I'm sure that I can answer the exam's question in a good way. But this is not the fact that you have to know. This is not the thing, the right thing that you have to make or you have to do. What you should make here is that you have to make a list, three references as I've said, or even you can choose if you have got, uh, I mean, some lectures and you find that they are more detailed and you can find a lot about different theories and different scholars' views. Yeah, you can read them. And then you can share your reading, by the way, with your colleagues on Facebook or Instagram or anywhere. And you may, can make something online. I mean, an online discussion or an online, uh, let's say, discussion on Facebook or Instagram, maybe during the summer break, yeah, discussing the content of the reading materials you have got. And then even making a list of questions. I mean, you get, okay, I'm guessing that here I have a list of three questions. My colleague may have a list of four. And then we may discuss the, the I mean, the answers we should give in each case or we should write in each case, really. Because really some students, they think that, because I've got uh, one of the questions is that, um, 
how can I look for good references concerning linguistics or didactics or I don't know literature or civilization? No, we have many, I think, online. We have many references, we have many reading materials, but you have just to be selective, that's all. I mean, choose what you can understand. Because sometimes really some, they start uh, reading books that they cannot understand. No, choose the things, choose the reading, uh, I mean, uh, materials that you as a student, you can understand. And when you understand it, you can, I mean, you can get which kind of questions you, you can have in this case, because your task is not just reading. You have to use your critical mind. You have to use your critical thinking and analytical skills. That's, what, that's one of the keys, by the way how to, how to uh, succeed in answering the exam's question is that when revising, starting from, uh, I mean, the stage of revision uh, of the reading materials you have got, at that moment, you should start thinking about which kind of questions you have got. And you have to rely on your critical thinking skills and your analytical even skills as well. So that's the thing that I can say in this case. Okay, I'd like to give the floor to my colleagues because I shouldn't say all the things. Because we have got a lot concerning even some questions. And I think that- yeah, thank you. Think. We, st we still have time for the other yeah, questions. Yeah, that's why. Is that I don't like to move to other okay, things. Okay, let's move, yes, yes, please. To let's move forward. Yeah. Yeah, so that we yeah. Yeah, wonderful. That's give, uh, you have given us actually a good understanding of what to expect and how to deal with that. Uh, now let's dive into the writing and formatting of the uh, exam response itself, the answer itself, how to structure the essay itself. And one of the key questions that we have received actually is uh, about the difference um, uh, the different instructional words that we usually use in the uh, exam questions, three basic terms, discuss, comment, and argue. Uh, uh, Dr. Ben, uh, ben Amal ben please, can you please enlighten us about the difference? Can you explain to us the difference between the, these, uh, these three terms and uh, how an understanding of this can help us in answering the uh, uh, the asked questions or the context contest questions, please. The floor is yours. Yeah. Yes, thank you so much, uh, dear colleague. Uh, well, first of all, I'd like to thank uh, the organizers of this webinar, uh, the Arabic Democratic Center, uh, University of Benghazi, Massa School, and all the organizers, uh, my dear colleague, uh, Fouzi Yarwa, uh, Dr. Najat Khaniwi for uh, moderating uh, the webinar and uh, my dear esteemed colleagues um, who are sharing their knowledge and experience uh, in uh, organizing and uh, running uh, doctorate uh, programs, uh, Professor Idri, Professor uh, Benzouk, uh, uh, Dr. Assessi, I hope I didn't forget uh, 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 other colleagues. Well, uh, concerning your question, uh, yes, generally in doctorate contests, we tend to give general questions. So it's not uh, uh, specific questions that we ask uh, because we take into consideration that the participants in these doctorate contests will be uh, from different universities and it's a national contest. Uh, so students are allowed to participate in any university. Um, uh, of course, uh, the university which is nearer to them, but they have the right to participate at any university. It's a national uh, exam. So generally in, in these uh, contests, we do not give uh, specific uh, questions. So they are general statements on which we ask students to reflect on. So whether we say discuss or comment or argue, for me, it's one, uh, they mean the same thing, reflect on this statement. What do you know about this uh, topic? What do you know about this problem? Um, bring your um, reflection um, uh, on the basis of what you have read, on the basis maybe of your experience as teachers. I know that many participants in these contests, especially graduates from uh, the teacher education schools are already teaching 
uh, at, at secondary schools. So uh, their answers will reflect to some extent their experience in teaching English as a foreign language. So this is what we mean by this class. Um, what you know, what can you say about this? And of course, you have to put it in an organized way, in an essay format, um, with clear introduction, body, conclusion. Um, of course, uh, I don't need to, uh, to remind you that your introduction should include a thesis statement. Um, it should be um, relevant to the, to the question, to the topic. Then um, you... Um, uh, let's say, uh, explore uh, the topic in, in a body paragraphs, uh, each paragraph with the topic sentence. So these mechanics of writing are very important. Of course, uh, put in, a, in, a, uh, in an appropriate way, uh, taking into account the mechanics of writing, capitalization, punctuation, uh, coherence and cohesion, all these uh, matters are important in uh, evaluating your essays. And of course, the content, the ideas should be relevant to the, to the, to the, uh, to the topic. Okay, so this is, uh, I guess, personally, there is no big difference between discuss or comment or argue. The major uh, thing is that you reflect on the statement which is given to you, put it in an appropriate format, uh, in an essay format, as I said, uh, in a correct English, you have to show us that uh, you master uh, the language, right? You don't have problems uh, in spelling or uh, grammar problems or, uh, um, right? So uh, you are, um, let's say, applying for a doctorate. So your level in writing in English should be uh, a good level. Okay, so you have to convince um, uh, the teachers who are correcting your papers that you deserve to be given a chance to be a doctorate student, right, through an organized, a well-expressed uh, essay. I think this is the main difference, I hope. Uh, yes, uh, Dr. Benihia, another question on the same issue, please, is uh, one of the, uh, many of the students actually uh, have uh, asked about it. What about starting or the current essay will explore as an opening statement in, uh, uh, in their essay, in their response? What do you think of this uh, let's say sentence as an opening one, an opening statement for an essay? Uh, would it be a good start for them or not? Yes. Well, there is no harm if you um, give like uh, a brief idea about what are you going to tackle in your essay. So if you say this essay will explore or will uh, talk about or discuss, yes, there is no harm. There is no harm. Uh, what is important is that we understand what are you going to say. We get a general idea about... Uh, the the answer that you are going to present, okay? The introduction is very important. So uh, generally the introduction gives us an impression about the level of uh, the student and whether the coming paragraphs will be uh, uh, worth, let's say, well, we read. I can ensure you that we read from the beginning to the end. But the, the introduction is very important is that it captivates. Um, the scorer or the uh, teacher who is uh, reading your uh, essay. So when the introduction is interesting, it is attracting, uh, it is well organized, we feel that the, the student knows what is he writing, we feel that like uh, that the student knows, as I said, what is, it's not um, copying or uh, just uh, rewriting things they have learned by heart. And I can uh, ascertain, uh, my dear students, that it's not a matter of learning by heart and reproducing, okay? Uh, we can feel, we have to feel your personality in what you write, okay? So you have to be convincing, you have to be, uh, let's say, um, academic as much as possible uh, in the choice of, uh, of, of the words, of the sentences, um, uh, what you argue or what you give as an explanation should be relevant to uh, to the question. Um, uh, you have to, let's say, to be concrete, 
right? Give concrete examples, give concrete information. So when we read your essay, we do not feel like you are uh, writing, uh, we are reading a book or we are reading uh, an article. We feel that a student is writing and the student is trying to explain for us, okay? Uh, so this is the most important thing, okay? Uh, whether you start with uh, this essay, well, I think this is more academic, more related to uh, writing articles or writing research papers, right? So generally in articles, we say this article will explore or this article or this study will be a descriptive or uh, uh, an exploration of a certain... Uh, so this is not, it may captivate maybe the attention of uh, the scholar or the, the teacher who is correcting the essay, but of course the essay is a whole, uh, okay? From the introduction to the body to the conclusion, it should be well written and well, uh, as I said, captivating from the beginning. Thank you very much for enlightening us, Dr. Ben uh, Speaking about being concrete, let us have a concrete example and a, a question that we can uh, discuss together. I would address this to uh, uh, Dr. Assessi, please, if you can. I will provide you with a, uh, let us say, a possible question for uh, for a PhD context about ESP and can you please uh, help us let us say or enlighten the students about how to answer and how to tackle such a type of question so the question runs as what challenges may ESP teachers or an ESP teacher face in designing a syllabus for his ESP students Uh, all right, so uh, good afternoon, everyone. So can you hear me? Yeah, vital clear. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, so first of all, uh, thank you very much for the invitation. I really appreciate it. And I, I really appreciate the effort um, you have been through so far to uh, organize such an interesting event. And I hope our students, of course, benefit the most uh, from uh, my colleagues who are course experts in these domains and they have a very large experience when it comes to PhD contests. Um, so as far as the question is concerned, we have to understand that um, in social and human sciences, there is no one, one right answer. And um, concerning the challenges um, ESP teachers face, if we may take the Algerian context, for example, we can find that uh, there are a few issues with understanding the uh, concept of ESP and the application of ESP uh, in, in specific domains, of course. Um, as far as the answer, um, it, we may understand that um, writing for a PhD contest is quite similar to writing um, a research paper, uh, be it an article or um, a chapter in a book um, or even like answering for, for an exam. Um, but still, it is academic. So we have to consider the academic side or academic writing in this, in this case. Um, so when we take a look at the problem itself, it means when we discuss, because any piece of writing in academia begins with a problem. So the problem is what kind of problems or challenges um, ESP teachers face when they design courses. Um, we always tend to begin uh, writing these essays with clarifying the problem or uh, saying that the problem came from a very specific background because problems do not occur like um, out of nowhere. They, they, uh, the problems occur because they have a background, it means that there are a few issues that have been faced. Uh, so we reach this issue or this uh, big problem. Um, so when we begin writing, like writing any essay, we have to consider the structure of the essay, which is quite important, of course. And when we take a closer look at the question um, in the PhD contest, it can be uh, a quote, it can be a direct question, of course, with um, one final word at the end of the question saying discuss, elaborate, argue, etc. So as far as this question is concerned, there might be a slight difference between um, arguing, clarifying, or discussing. If you are asked, of course, to elaborate, here you may have to explain. You may have to provide um, 
let's say, contextual data. You may have to provide examples because your job when you explain is to provide simplified information about um, a complex issue or a complex topic. As an example, as you have said, when we talk about teacher training or what are the main problems faced by ESP teachers in teaching ESP, we have to consider a wider issue, which is who should teach the ESP course? Because here, uh, this is a huge problem that uh, if I am asked in a PhD contest to, uh, to, to elaborate or to explain, I have to like take this huge issue, huge problem and divide it into small problems, try to explain it. Uh, so the background of the issue is who must teach the ESP course? Is, should it be a, a language specialist or a subject specialist? Should it be a collaborative work or should it be an individual work? Um, so here we, we, we get into the core issue, which is uh, designing the course itself. So the main issues faced by um, ESP practitioners or ESP teachers are related, of course, to course design and material selection and development. Um, so when we say material development, usually for language teachers is not like for specialist teachers or subject specialist teachers. Uh, a subject specialist might be more, uh, let's say, able to understand authentic materials. But for language specialists, it would be a bit difficult. It would require much more effort. So that's why I said um, before tackling the issue, some background information is very important. Same as writing a research paper, same as writing a thesis, and uh, I'm pretty sure all, all of the, um, uh, let's say, uh, our master's graduate, if we may call them that, uh, they, they have been through research recently, and they have produced what we call um, a master's thesis. It means they know how to find a problem, they know how to discuss a problem, so this is not a problem. However, um, let's say summarizing a whole thesis into one um, small short essay might be a bit difficult. Um, so when we talk about the issue itself, some background is very important. Same as uh, students wrote a whole, a whole maybe, um, let's say chapter on background of the study. So they must consider writing some background concerning the problem they are, they are dealing with. Um, as for the introductory paragraph, this is where usually we find the background of, of the issue. So we have to consider, for example, uh, we keep the same example of, of challenges faced by ESP teachers. Uh, we can say that um, the problem is recurring in many countries around the world, of course, Algeria is included, uh, obviously. Uh, who should teach the ESP course? Should it be a uh, specialist or language specialist or subject specialist or a collaboration between all of them? And it doesn't really, uh, or it, it's not require, it's not a requirement, but it would help if you cite some names or cite, cite some researches. And uh, this is why um, reading about ESP now before the contest is quite important. Uh, well, we cannot obviously read everything about ESP because there are many papers, many books, etc. but it would help to, uh, to consult flagship journals and flagship, uh, let's say, if we call them books. Uh, for example, Hutchinson and Waters, uh, we have Dudley Evans and St. John, we have Robinson, we have Helen Busterman. So all of these, of course, they are, um, let's say, the leaders of, of ESP around the globe. And uh, if th this is when you want to understand what is ESP or how ESP uh, operates or how ESP practitioner uh, practitioners operate. However, if you want to learn more about ESP in practice, it means what what is new in ESP. Um, what I really encourage students to consult is or are a number of flagship flagship journals such as the Journal of ESP. Uh, we have uh, I think uh, Geras. I think it's it's a French. Um, how do you say journal? We have Iberica, of course, is, is a Spanish journal as well. We have ESP Today. So all of these uh, journals, we have ESP in Asia, of course. All of these journals provide, um, let's say, students with a clear idea of how we apply ESP. Because we have to understand something. When you write for a PhD contest, is not writing a thesis. You do not have uh, that kind of time, that kind of resources, et cetera. 
Uh, so you have to be very, very clear and you have to stay on the right path towards reaching the answer to the question uh, that has been posed or asked in the beginning. Um, something else, of course, concerning the latest issues of uh, these journals or when you check these journals, you will understand, of course, the application of some uh, or, or the answer to some questions. One of them might be the question you have asked in the beginning, which is, uh, what are the main challenges faced by um, ESP teachers? So uh, to, to, to give a very brief, uh, let's say, answer concerning what are the, um, the issues, I think, first, it depends on the, the teacher himself or herself. So if the teacher, for example, is a subject specialist, they will definitely uh, find different problems than a language specialist. But since um, ESP teachers, for example, in Algeria, most Sorry, of them Dr. Asusi, uh, uh, we have to move to another to other questions. Of course, okay. yeah. Uh, uh, sorry for that, but thank you for all the uh, informative tips and uh, that you have uh, provided. Now, let us shift now to focusing on how to convince the examiner about with our writing. Let us have another question in didactics and try to skeleton it or to flesh it out and discuss it uh, in a way that allows us to... Um, uh, help the students see how would they convince the uh, examiner about uh, uh, their ideas and what they have written. Okay, Najat, so the question... Did I have yeah. a question concerning didactics? Uh, yeah, I have a question. Is... I'm, 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 I'm about to ask it. Sorry, I'll have to give... No, I have the, got, I've got a question here, and it's a question of uh, the... I mean, the doctor's exam question uh, in March 2022. The question of didactics is uh, as follows. The grammar translation method was seriously challenged by the emergence of the direct method. At the outset of the 20th century, discuss the innovation brought by the latter. So, sorry, I mean, Dr. Bizouf, I guess... Uh... Let's yeah. focus on a more recent topic. Uh, no, I think yeah. uh, this uh, this question. I'm, I'm saying that this question was given in uh, March 2022. Okay, so it's one of the questions, Ali. Really. That's why I mean the latest contest. So uh, most of the students, instead of focusing on one method, since they have some keywords, they forgot about the keywords they have got or uh, they focus on uh, the method. They think that the question is about the grammar, the, the main similarities and differences between uh, grammar translation method and the direct method. But the question is about the direct method. It's clear the answer of this question should be in an essay or classification essay in which the, the student should, let's say, classify or mention the main characteristics of the direct method. And many students at that time, I mean, in March 2022, they were like, uh, I don't know, they were misled by the uh, phrase or the grammar translation method. And instead of focusing on the direct method, method they started tackling the differences and similarities between the grammar translation method and the direct method. And here, a key that I have, one, one thing that I wanna say, or I have to highlight here, that students, they have to highlight or they have to know the keywords of the question. But at the same time, they shouldn't uh, be misled by some keywords because sometimes some students, they think because maybe of some uh, psychological factors like fear or stress, they get lost. So instead of answering the question as it is, they add more things because coming back to the question concerning which kind of references a uh, uh, student they have to read, because sometimes they think that since it is doctor's exam question, they have to mention many things and they have to mention a lot. So sometimes the question is easy, but some students, they think that the question, since it is a doctor's exam, the question must be difficult. And that's why they start adding more details that are not required. So in this question, really, 
So the question is so clear, it's so easy, it's classification as I, it's about the known teaching methods, all we know in the field of teaching English as a foreign language. And I think students they, at that time, really many of them, they knew the answer, but because of fear and stress, they got lost. And instead of writing classification essay, they wrote about the main differences and similarities between the grammar translation method and the direct method. But in this essay, they should write just an introduction in which they have to give uh, background knowledge concerning the teaching method, the known teaching method, and they should move to the thesis statement that should reflect or the outline of the essay or the body of the essay. So in so if I have like four characteris characteristics, sorry, that I have to mention. So I say characteristic one, two, three in one statement. And then in the body of the essay, the first, the first unit of the body should be about the first characteristic. Of course, here I should illustrate as a student, I should give more details and I can mention some names, like names of course of known scholars. Going back again to the question, I have got one of the questions is that, uh, do I need to add the, the list of references by the end of the essay? No, this is an essay, it's not a dissertation, it's not an article. Yeah, it's an academic work, still we are in academia, but this is an essay which is an answer to your exam question. So you don't need to add any list of references, just you have to illustrate, you have to mention some names or uh, uh, the names of some scholars just to say that, okay, what you are saying is true, or you have read, uh, I mean, some references about uh, the, the teaching method you are talking or you are tackling in your essay. And then the second unit will be about the second characteristic and the third one, the third and the fourth, and may add the fifth, I may add even. So uh, number six, even if students, they have got many things to say, but in this case, they have just to classify the characteristics they have got. And in this case, so in each unit, they have to give more details, more illustrations, and they have to mention some names from time to time. And then when it comes to the conclusion, they have just to restate the main idea. I mean, the thesis statement using other words, of course, and they have to restate the strongest ideas or this, let's say the main characteristics they have already mentioned in the body of the essay. So here we come back to how to write a good essay because if you, um, I mean, if you want to succeed in answering the exam question, you have just to know how to write a good essay. You have to work on honing your writing skills. You have to be ready. You should know what are the main strategies. Okay, I should know about the number of strategies to write uh, the, the introduction, giving background knowledge, uh, quoting sometimes, but a short quote, not a long one. This is an essay. Then writing Professor, a good thesis please, statement. Uh, 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 yeah, thank you, because Dr. Estesi has already uh, talked about uh, the structure yeah. in the Okay, thank you. Thank you very so much. It was this, brilliant. Yeah. No, thank you very much. It was br can brilliant. I say, can I say something can about the question concerning uh, literature? One, one minute, please. Can you please insert the question you have just discussed in the chat box? Chat yeah. box, please. The question that you have yeah. discussed. Uh, Let us move to another question. Another question and question back to you. Because uh, some, in a minute, yes, please. Dr. So, Dr. Najat, so, because some no, students, yeah. uh, some in the chat uh, box, uh, they are asking for some questions concerning literature and civilization? Yeah, I've seen, I've seen. Yeah. We are coming back to that in the open discussion okay, later. Thank you, that's what I want to okay. say. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Let us finish uh, the question that we have seen before and then we go back yeah. to uh, the uh, them in the open discussion. Professor Idri, yeah. please, if you're here, let me address this question to you still about uh, giving examples. I have another question here. Professor Idri. I guess she left or she's not hearing. Yeah, no, I'm here. <laughs> here I was right okay, <laughs> okay, so we have another question here uh, that I would like to uh, you to enlighten us about and how to answer such a type of um, uh, questions. It runs as follows and it says, the digital age with its reliance on technology has occasioned a paradigm shifting classroom practices. 
The overall aim of EFL teaching is to enhance socio-cognitive ability to ultimately engender independent learning. Comment. This is the question. Okay, I, will, uh, I, I need to write it and end the discussion. Yeah, uh, can you copy it? Student so that they can follow with you. Yeah, sure. Put it in the in the chat because I need to comment on the question and its keywords with the students directly. Yeah, uh, absolutely. I'm writing it. Of course, the, uh, I guess that the topic is quite interesting here because uh, it is a, an updated issue. It's a timely, uh, yes, it's a timely topic. That's it. Uh, Excuse look, me, when you the question. Sorry. Are we expected yes. to answer uh, possible exam questions? I um, I feel like uh, students are asking us previous questions that have been um, asked in previous contests. Are we expected to give them the answer? How? What? What sh should they say in the answer? I'm not going to no, answer the question. Yeah, we I'm going answer to tell the... them how to answer the question. We are here to give tips. We give hints. We give uh, guidelines. But not to answer, guidelines, but not to answer the question. Absolutely. Absolutely not. Because if we are, we are teachers, and we are against spoon feeding students in our daily life. So, uh, but uh, when I started my speech, I said that I will talk later on about how to approach a task. That's yeah, why absolutely. I would like to go to this question and to just um, pay the students' attention to the keywords. The first thing you need, you need to read carefully the, uh, the statement, because generally we can give a statement, we can give a definition, we can give an example. And we ask students to comment. For example, here, you have digital age. This is a keyword. And you have uh, a paradigm practices. shift to classroom practices. So here, you need to write this, this expression on the draft you have. And you speak about uh, enhanced sociocognitive ability. This is a sociocognitive ability is a third keyword. And independent learning, which is related to learner autonomy. All in all, here you have four main keywords. So your uh, uh, your work should be based on how to go from the general to specific, and how to relate the digital age and technology. And I guess if you get this question, if the question is asked two years ago, I think the answer might be different nowadays with the uh, with the AI inclusion in our uh, teaching and learning practices. So you need to talk about the technology and the digital age and as uh, in your introduction and thesis statement, and you need to relate it to um, how classroom practices are changing accordingly. And of course, you need to talk about the relationship between these two from the uh, literature that you already have in mind, because you are not supposed to create new knowledge because research starts by being consumers of knowledge first. So when you make a link between this technology and the classroom practices, which we find that they are changing over time because of the ever evolution of this technology. So what do we need to do next? So there is a problematic here. We need to relate it to teaching methodologies and the teaching methodology is already given in this question, which is a sociocognitive approach. So. The approach you need to talk about is a sociocognitive approach in order to develop the sociocognitive competence in the learner. Why? For the sole reason to uh, encourage learners to be autonomous and for the sake of autonomous learning and independent learning. And in each space, you need to give uh, some references or authors who worked on, on, the, on the theme. And you conclude by making a link between all these elements together and prospects for the future. And you can even add a personal view at the end in your conclusion. So all in all, this is the way you need to organize your, uh, your essay because it is an essay. It is not uh, an article for publication as uh, Mrs. Uh, Amel, uh, Dr. Amel Ben Yahya said. So all in all, in brief, so this should be done as a draft. We, you plan for your answer 
and you start taking the paragraph by paragraph to see how to develop. And remember that in each paragraph, you need to have your topic sentence and the main idea and supporting ideas. You need to have a thesis statement in your introduction and your concluding sentences in your conclusion. If anyone who, okay, so I do not Thank want you. to take more time. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Idri. Actually, it was really insightful. Insightful, sorry. Uh, uh, Dr. Ben Yahya, please, uh, can you comment on the same question? How would you approach it uh, your, yourself if you were a student? Let us put ourselves in the shoes of the students. If you were a student this time passing the context, how would you approach the same question, please? Would you go the same way as Professor Idri or is there another venue for tackling the same question. How would you convince um, me, let's like say as a, uh, or another one, a more experienced one, because I'm the youngest here. Uh, I wouldn't <laughs> compare myself to all of you, uh, obvious, but please, can you, uh, how would you convince a, an examiner with your answer, please? Yeah. Yes, yes, uh, uh, Dr. Najat. Uh, well, um, I guess really, um, Answering the question as a student, um, uh, no. uh, you, no, you no, should no, know. Really, no, 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 not really no. answering it, but structuring the uh, the yes. uh, question. Yes, how to approach it. Yeah. Maybe my, no. my answer. You should know. We have to agree on something. Uh, oh. The essay, the essay uh, question by by uh, nature is a subjective uh, question type. Yeah. Assessment. When we talk about assessment, the essay uh, assessment or the, the essay question is subjective. It's not reliable. Why? Because the the um, maybe what a certain scorer uh, would consider as a good answer may not be the same as uh, another scorer. Okay. So even if I give you the answer, I answer uh, the question. I give you the answer. You learn it by heart. Maybe you won't get a good. Uh, a good score. So it's not really a matter of how should we answer this question. As I said, the students must show good mastery of writing, okay, writing mechanics, and then they should uh, bring uh, relevant ideas to the answer. Of course, uh, we, we would all start from general to uh, more specific. The introduction will introduce the topic. Uh, sorry, would you uh, remind me of the question, uh, Dr. Najat? The question yeah. that they want yeah. me to answer. Sure, sure. Yeah. Okay. So the uh, question runs as follows. The digital age with its reliance on technology has occasioned the paradigm shift in classroom practices. The mm -hmm, overall mm -hmm. aim of EFL teaching is to, to enhance the socio-cognitive ability to ultimately engender independent learning. Comment. Yes, yes. So it's clear that the focus of this question is on uh, the advantages uh, that uh, technology uh, is offering for education. How does te technology uh, enhance uh, learners and teachers' uh, autonomy? Okay, uh, it's clear that um, the questions that we are asking now um, have a lot to do with the digital aid, with technology, the implementation of uh, computer-assisted learning or computer-assisted assessment. So students have to focus on these topics. They are very common uh, nowadays uh, and uh, expect to get maybe questions related or in this sense. So for the question you have just asked, it's related to the importance of technology in the EFL classroom. Okay, uh, from a teacher side and from a learner uh, part also, how does technology um, now help in learning a foreign language for students? How does it um, help increase their self-independence, their autonomy, their... Uh, now we no longer talk about teacher-centeredness, it's learner-centeredness, which means that learners have uh, the responsibility towards their learning, okay? The teacher is a guide. The teacher is a prompter, is a facilitator, and students have this task of searching for information and working on 
getting the information by themselves because recent uh, approaches to language learning have uh, shown that we learn better when we go for the information, when we learn it by ourselves. Uh, it's better than the teacher gives us really information. And my um, argument towards uh, 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 the students asking teachers, uh, how would you answer this question? This is a good example that students are not capable of uh, uh, taking responsibility towards uh, their answers, towards their revision. I'm um, um, uh, really, um, I will not say astonished, but to, to hear students saying, how, would, 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 how uh, shall we revise for, I cannot tell you how should you revise. Okay, I can give you tips, I can give you guidelines, I can give you some directions. For me, for instance, I'm advising my students who will choose didactics, for example, uh, to focus on, uh, as I said, learner centeredness, on learners autonomy, uh, learners and teachers autonomy, on the implementation of uh, technology in the EFL classrooms, on the role of artificial intelligence, the impact of artificial intelligence, both on uh, research and on, uh, let's say, pedagogical practices in EFL classrooms. So go to this sense, right? Most questions, I'm sure, will tackle, um, will tackle, let's say, recent uh, concerns, okay? Now, AI is um, uh, endeavoring, it is uh, uh, present everywhere. So you have to, uh, to prepare something on the role of AI, uh, AI sorry, and how does AI um, influence positively or negatively uh, the teaching and learning practices in EFL classrooms. So it's in this uh, sense that the answer to this question will, uh, will go. We start, of course, with a general statement uh, about the importance of technology and that we are living in a digital age. It's um, uh, inevitable that technology is used everywhere, okay? In, uh, in teaching, in learning, in preparing projects, in doing research, it's always there. And then tackle the advantages that uh, technology and uh, uh, digital devices are offering for teachers and learners. And then conclude with a statement of, uh, that technology is good, but we have to, it's a two-edged sword, we have to direct it in, in the positive way. This is globally how uh, I would personally uh, answer this, uh, this question, okay? But for students, okay. please be autonomous, be independent. Uh, you are applying or you are uh, candidating for a doctorate contest. We have to, you have to show us a minimum of searching skills Right, so I cannot tell you which book should you revise or should you read, okay? Maybe as an orientation, start by reading your lecture notes. Your teachers have prepared some lectures for you. Uh, these are summarized, they will guide you. So you may start with your lectures in didactics or in ESP or in applied linguistics, and then try to reinforce maybe these lectures are somehow, uh, let's say, need uh, some updates. Try to reinforce this with uh, up-to-date information. Now the internet gives you plenty of information. There is no problem with getting books. Don't go too much into the details. Don't read books, uh, whole books, yeah. but get the essence, okay? About- yes, uh, Sorry, uh, Dr. Benihab, because we have already uh, talked about that. Let's move to other questions. Let me yes. address Darka City, and I have been reading the, uh, uh, the comment that you have uh, posted in the chat box, um, which I really uh, appreciate it. Can you please um, enlighten us more uh, about the subject and how the students would use the information they got to convince the uh, uh, examiners and what the examiners are looking for? I have had actually a small experience that I shared with Dr. Ben Yahya last year when we uh, corrected the doctoral exam. And uh, let me, um, from this humble experience, I have noticed uh, uh, 
let's say that some students are really skilled at writing, but when they misunderstood, and this takes us back to uh, Dr. Benzouk and what the, uh, Dr. Idri has shared, when the student fail uh, in understanding the, uh, the, uh, the question and the, the, uh, the heart of it, uh, uh, even if he is an experienced writer, he would fail the exam. The same goes when the student knows or has a lot of information about this topic, but they cannot structure it in an essay. And still, so the same here, the students cannot pass and cannot get the mark. How would a student balance these two uh, important, let's just say, aspects uh, uh, and manage them so that they uh, together so that they can succeed and pass the exam. Uh, Dr. Assessi, please can you uh, please answer this one before getting back to Dr. Benzouk about civilization and literature, please. Uh, all right, thank you. So um, as, as you have mentioned before and several of uh, our colleagues have elaborated on understanding the question and highlighting the uh, the keywords in the question is is critical to the accuracy of writing itself um so uh, when when discussing a, a, a specific subject we have to first as you said uh, pinpoint what are the keywords so we know that we do not deviate from the objective of, of, of this uh, piece of writing at the same time, the uh, function of the writing itself, because um, discussing a topic or uh, let's say arguing about a topic, elaborating on a topic is, is not the same thing. Um, so one of the, uh, I think one of the questions focused more on, on the writing process, it means how do we begin and how do we finish or finish up a piece of writing? So. Since it's an essay, I really recommend um, reading about how to develop an essay because I think uh, during the, the third year, in uh, during the licence degree of course, um, students are supposed to learn how to develop an, an essay. And we always try to teach that the most important part of an essay is the thesis statement. So in the thesis statement, students are supposed to write what is the function, what is the objective of this essay? Am I going to elaborate? Am I going to argue? Am I going to mention my position? Then of course, uh, defend my position and then um, write my ar arguments, refute the counter arguments. So the objective is very important. Now, how to approach or how to write the piece of information because some students they tend to read a lot, memorize a lot. And at the end, of course, they say my writing was, I was not very convinced by my writing. And uh, the professor or the scholar who's going to read and correct your work, they are not really convinced that you have a point of view. So usually they take a look at your work and they see, they can see that you have memorized certain aspects and you want to put them in, even if they do not belong to that piece of writing even if they do not serve the objective of your writing. Because some students, obviously, they say, I have memorized this. I have no idea what am I going to put, so let's just put whatever I have mem mem memorized. So here we are going to lose many things in writing. We're going to lose cohesion. We're going to lose coherence. More, more importantly, we're going to, use, to lose sorry, the unity of our work. So the teacher or the professor is going to um, correct your work. They are not expecting you to memorize, uh, let's say, an author, a book, um, a page number, a year. These things cannot be expected in such a context. What do we expect or what professors usually expect from um, a student is that this student is not just a student anymore, especially in a PhD context. Uh, they, are, um, they are treated as scholars as novice researchers so professors expect these novi novice researchers to have an opinion to synthesize to to criticize why not as as long as your writing contains unity means there is unity you are talking about the same topic you do not deviate from one topic to another you have an opinion it means you are defending a point of view using arguments using um let's say personal experience, why not? This is very important. 
something you have read in an article you remember. We're not going to say, please cite the name, the year, the page number, uh, the the uh, the author, the I don't know, the book or or the article title or the journal. That's not very logical. So if we read something um, in 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 an essay, saying or or the student is saying. Uh, I don't know, like any 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 name, like Nun, David Nunan or or uh, I don't know, Ken Highland, for example, said this. Uh, especially if it's something groundbreak, something that is new, we are expected or we are expecting from this student to put their point of view, to elaborate, to explain, but we are not really expecting them to cite names or put like citations in the right form, because it's really difficult for students to memorize everything. What, what I really encourage students is to, mem to memorize concepts. What I really encourage students to memorize is or are very specific technical words or technical, uh, let's say, concepts, phrases that are important in the domain. Um, if we take the example of ESP, we would really appreciate if the student uses, for example, the expression or the phrase needs analysis, because needs analysis is a concept uh, is a process that is very well known in ESP. So if they use something a bit differently, we would understand that this student is not really familiar with the topic or with the domain of ESP. So we are not, again, we are not expecting students to memorize basically everything, but at the same time, we just expect them to understand what they have memorized or at least understand what they have read and to put their point of view is the most important thing, I think. Okay, thank you. Thank you, uh, Dr. Assasi. Now, let me go back to Dr. Benzouk. Yes, a lot of students have been uh, asking about uh, civilization and literature. Uh, can you please uh, yeah. share yeah, us, uh, share with yeah. us your thoughts oh, about yeah. the, the matter, please? Thank you, Dr. Najat. But, uh, first, I'd just I'd like to say something in addition to what uh, Dr. Assasi has said concerning how to answer uh, correctly, because it's all about knowing how to write, really. Because sometimes I know that students whose major is literature, and they could, uh, I mean, uh, succeed in, um, I mean, in, uh, I don't know, in, in the field of didactics. So the idea is that how to be selective in your revision, to get the main uh, ideas, to get the main Thing that you need for the contest for the exam and in addition to this okay you have to know how to write a good essay because really some students they fail to get the keywords of the question and they fail how to organize the ideas they have got sometimes they have got a lot to say and but they don't know how to organize that in addition to the let's say some psychological factors like fear or stress some students really, because of being under stress, they've got the answer, but when they write, they write something else. So you have to control that stress that you have got, you have to control your fear, and you have to be self-confident. And you have to use your critical thinking and your analytical skills in the way how you organize your essay. It's because um, we as evaluators or as like teachers, if you we can say, I mean, what we should take into consideration, of course, the content, but in addition to this, the form, the way you have answered the essay, the introduction, do you have a good thesis statement and the body of the essay? Have you mentioned all the required uh, information and the conclusion and the way you have concluded your essay? So you should revise and you should be selective because many in the chat box they are asking about references. Look for anything because I think all my colleagues, they agree on the fact that nowadays we have got a lot. Really. And I think even concerning any question, whether, whether even the first question concerning uh, the use of technology in the field of teaching English as a foreign language, we've got a lot to say about Web 3.0 or Web 2.0 and the, the, I mean, the use of tech tools uh, in the EFL classroom, its effect or on the teacher, the learner, uh, let's say online learning, online teaching, many things to be said, but they have to be organized, that's all. Coming back to the question concerning literature, since some, they are asking about literature and civilization. And again, I've given, at the beginning, I've given an easy question just as 
kind of sometimes the question is so easy and some students they cannot answer just because of that it's not about oh no it's a difficult question no it tackles a new or recent uh theme that uh, we have not dealt with or have not read about as students no it's about your understanding Gary. sometimes it's an easy question and some students cannot answer it and sometimes it's a difficult question and so it's not it's a question at the end, it's a question that goes with your abilities as a master student. So we know that, I mean, in your lessons and master training years, you've got a lot concerning how to write an essay. You've got a lot concerning your major, whether it is literature, didactics, linguistics, or civilization. So you know a lot. And you know exactly what you need, because, I mean, for the content, they give you two modules. You know, if it is, I, I okay, so if it is literature, I have, for instance, British literature. So in the case of British literature, I should know what I should focus on. I should focus on, let's say, the history of British literature or the movement in British literature. So if I take, for instance, one of the questions I've met uh, uh, concerning, the, it's one of the, I don't know, it's one of the questions, yeah. Uh, doctor's questions, of course. So we have modernism as a literary movement signifies uh, let's say, uh, a main shift in British literature on different levels. In the light of the above mentioned claim, write an essay in which you show the significance of the literary movement as well as its main characteristics, which is a direct question. But you, as a student, you have at the beginning, in the introduction, you have to mention um, some information or give background information concerning modern British literature or the history of British literature in general, but in brief, in short, because this is an introduction. And then in your thesis yeah, statement- yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry, to... sorry, Dr. Benzog, for the interruption, I have a, uh, a, a question here, especially about the introduction in the uh, chat box. Yeah. Okay, okay, go ahead. Whether, yeah. whether, whether to insert the answer to the question in the introduction itself or where should they uh, or oh, because, should it be included no, in the body or in the conclusion? Uh, the Please, thesis statement. In the thesis statement, I should, for instance, in this case, I have the main characteristics of modern British literature or modernism in British literature. I have characteristic characteristics and I have thematic features as well. So in a thesis statement, I have to mention that modern British literature has got what? some stylistic features, a number of stylistic features. If I have them, I can mention them. One, two, and three. And other thematic features, one, two, three, in one thesis statement. That's the way how we answer in a good way. You can mention in general thematic stylistic features. That, that's correct as well. But if you outline more, it's good. Because in this case, me as, uh, I mean, uh, as an, Let's say as a teacher, I was like, okay, this student really has got a good answer right from the beginning because the introduction is the gate. Okay, so if you have got a beautiful gate, I'd like to visit you. I'd like to read the essay. That's the the idea that we have to focus on because sometimes some students they don't know they know just how to give more details. They don't know how to organize them, even because the function of the thesis statement is how to organize the outline of the essay in one statement, clear one. It can be long, it doesn't matter, but it should contain the outline of the body of the essay. Then when you go to the body, you may mention the main characteristics, let's say, of modern or uh, modernism in British literature. You can start with stylistic features, like what we have got many, like the use of irony. Yeah, the, the use think, of, uh, uh, an, sorry, another question. Uh, yeah, the use. Uh, here, recurring one uh, is whether they and the students need to uh, define the terms, the keywords they are referring to, or would they consider them as, uh, let's say, already known by the yeah, exam? By the way, one of the strategies, I think students, they all know this in their lessons years, that one of the strategies how to write a good introduction is defining as well. Sometimes we might define, but in short, in the introduction, because one of the strategies is giving definitions in short, okay, and brief, giving background knowledge. Uh, let's say um, having sometimes 
what's about in an official exam like uh, the doctor's exam it's not uh, good really to quote uh, i think dr Sassi has already said that early we don't need long quotes it's not a dissertation it's not an article you are not a re researcher but you are future researcher that we don't need Research. from you to quote. yeah we need from you to tell us what you have got what you have read because the essay in itself reflects your selection reflects your reading selection let's say reflects your critical mind that's what we need because i saw i got keywords because sometimes really some students even in getting the keywords of the question they get lost because sometimes we have a key we have a term not, i don't like to say term we have a phrase but it's not a key word i mean it's not related to the content of the question it's a misleading let's say term or it's a misleading phrase. So sooner they have to be careful when they start answering the question. They have to know, okay, it's a keyword that I have to include. It's a keyword, it's related to the main idea that I have to focus on. Yeah, within within, 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 oh, within uh -huh. the same topic that you are talking yeah. uh, about, uh, another yeah. question that was asked okay. in the uh, chat uh, box, uh, chat is that, yeah, uh, chat, yeah. is, um, if there are many characteristics of the issue, should I be selective or should I mention yeah, everything? Sure, I guess sure. I, there is still many sure, of the right. students. You have to be, because of course, problem with selection and being selective. Yeah, because that's what I've said. I mean, the essay in itself should reflect the critical mind of the students. How can I, uh, can I know that this student really uh, has used his critical thinking skills in, I mean, his, in a good way? How can I know this? If he can succeed, or if they can, if the learner can succeed, or if they can succeed really in uh, selecting what they have to mention in their asset. So if I have many characteristics, I have to be selective. I should, I should uh, choose the main ones. Yeah. I've already said yeah. that you are not obliged because I mean, in the field of literature or civilization or didactics or linguistics or any field. We know that always we have the main list and we have an additional list. What I should focus on as a student when starting answering the exam question is the main list. If I have many items or many ideas to mention in the essay, so I have to be selective and that's all. And I have to be the judge as a student in this case. I, have to, should, I should make good judgment. Here I should mention this. No, I shouldn't mention. Because in any field, we have many references. We have many articles. We have got, I think, even uh, like online and uh, lectures, and we have soon that they've got their notes as well. So in this case, they have yeah. just to be selective, and they have to focus on the main ideas, whether in the field of literature or civilization. And they have to highlight the keywords. The key okay, thank, you, thank, you, thank you, Dr. Benzo. Sorry for the yeah. interruption. Let me go back to Professor Idri with this okay, uh, thank you. Uh, last uh, question, I guess. Um, doc, uh, Professor Idri, please, if you are here. The students were asking, is it tolerable to be subjective? Let's say if the question says, argue, is it tolerable to be subjective? Is subjectivity with providing examples allowed and acceptable and tolerated by an examiner uh, in such a context? Please go ahead. Of course not. Uh, <laughs> because when speaking about doctoral context, we are talking about getting prepared for academic writing and an academic journey. And by definition, any research is based on objectivity. That's why we are asking students to provide all the time arguments from authors and scholars in the field. So when approaching your essay writing, you need to write academically, being concise and precise, and avoid any aesthetic kind of writing. And I'm addressing this particularly for students who are creative writers and students who are in literature and civilization. Because remember that we have some uh, specific way of writing that is needed for uh, academic essays. So read about how to write an academic essay and try to practice as much as you can and avoid any kind of personal judgment and value judgment in your writing. Otherwise, this can be uh, really devastating for your mark. How? Because some of the rules in the, the uh, doctoral contest is avoiding 
uh, avoiding some specific some specific signs. And of course, when being subjective, this can denote your region, this can denote your religion, this can denote your uh, way of thinking, and this can be a sign in itself. Uh, in 2018, in our, one of the contests, we could identify um, one of the figures done in one of the universities that all students use the same figure, and figures are not accepted in an essay. So they were eliminated right from the beginning because we could not correct their uh, their their papers because of the similarity that exists between the uh, topics or between the answers. So try to be a thinker, try to opt for academic writing, and do never ever be subjective and provide value judgment statements. Anything you provide, if you have the reference, right between bracket the author and the year, uh, without giving the, the all the references at the end, because we know that the memory cannot be uh, that good to give the right to the exact reference, but at least you show that you read, that you know the authors, you know, you know the theories, you know the theories. So uh, your knowledge should be provided according to the existing literature, not according to you as a person. And this is it. Okay. Uh, Dr. Assisi, I have been uh, uh, I have been reading your answer to the same question, and I don't think you shared the same opinion with Professor Idri. Can you please share your thoughts with us on the same uh, question, please? Well, um, it's, it's, it's a similar uh, Let's say it's a similar answer, but approach differently. That's all. Um, so yeah. of course, no one is supposed to be subjected. Uh, in in my answer in in the chat box, I said when you provide your perspective with arguments, you right. are not being subjected. So right. we cannot say that someone who shares their perspective, because when we expect the um, the student to synthesize, means they comment on a very specific, uh, let's say, theory, notion, etc. Because if the question is, are you, we are supposed to, or we expect the student to give their opinion. So if their opinion is backed up with, uh, with let's say, evidence, with proof, uh, with arguments, they are not being subjective. It's, it's perfectly fine, of course, and it's highly required, actually, 